Hey, are we live? We're live. Okay, great. Excellent. Welcome to Lee Chess Plays. I'm International Master John Bartholomew here for LeeChess.org as usual. Sorry for the couple of minutes delay. Yeah, we're only late about two minutes, but I'm using a new recording software and there's a stream key and it wasn't apparent that it was uh, working for a second. So I think we're all good now. So let's, uh, let's get this started. So things might look a little bit different. The resolution is higher and also my cropping on the stream is a little bit different. Antono, you're up first here. Good luck to you. Yes. Hello, everyone in the chat. Greetings, No Joke Chess. Hey, thanks for your help just a moment ago. Uh, I was able to figure out what the issue was. So fortunately, here we are, as usual, and in slightly higher resolution. Hello to our friends on YouTube as well. Yeah, greetings, everyone. Let me fix my webcam just a little bit. You guys can properly see the time. Okay. Excellent. All right, let's go knight c6. As you can see, tons of challenges already. We got over 50. Good stuff. How's everyone doing today? Bocek says, okay, not hundreds of challenges. It does cap out at 50 as, as at least what it shows. But the challenges are still there if you challenge uh, now. So <laughs> don't worry. You're not getting lost in the shuffle somewhere. All right, let's play b6, bishop b7. I like to play this way against the Smith Mora sometimes. Go rook e8 just to meet bishop h6 with bishop h8. Preserve the bishop. Hello, Destroya. How was the tourney yesterday? Oh, you, you must mean the uh, tournament that I was a spectator at. Yeah, I went to our state blitz championship, and I was uh, checking out the event. Hanging out. I was actually supporting one of my friends who was playing his first over the board tournament. So that was really fun. That was a good time. Thank you for asking. Okay, how do I play this now? Like, um, E6 kind of suggests itself, but he's going to retreat to C3. And then what do I do about that pawn? I'm not sure. Let's maybe go Knight E5. I think Knight E5 is the way to handle this. We'll do that. Maybe preparation for e6. Unleash the light square bishop a little bit. Hello, John Carter as well. Mr. Haas asks, can we play? Well, you're in a pool of players, so you have as, as good a chance as anyone else in getting selected. So feel free to send your challenge. As usual, it has to be a 3 plus 0 regular chess challenge. Shouldn't be any increment, no variance, nothing like that. And I'm really building the hedgehog structure here. All the pawns on the 6th rank. Could be a little bit fragile. I have to be careful. But I'm feeling good about it right now. Hello, Lars from Oslo. Good. Good to hear. Yes, Sabina has also been doing Lee chess plays. Absolutely. Shout out to Sabina. Ooh, I see what my opponent wants to go for. I think. Let me think how I'm going to respond. Mm, this might be a little sketchy for me, guys. I think I made a mistake in this first game. I think, I think, I think, well, okay, there's maybe some way I can mitigate this damage. I'm nervous, though. <laughs> let's try it. Let's, let's try. Okay, I was worried about a, a different move there, but F5, okay. Now I can maybe come back here. This is often a good reaction. I'm also thinking about taking and going after this, but let's go back to e5. Hello, likes. Is the audio out of sync for anyone else? I hope not. I hope not. Okay, we'll take here. And then I'm going to try to pile up on this, maybe here. Audio is good? Okay, perfect. Okay, rook f1. 
Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and play this. Aggressive move, looking to attack here. 31 seconds. Basically a berserked blitz game, or a hyper bullet game for me. Yeah, B4. I, I will be really curious about that. We're going to analyze that afterwards for sure. I'm very, very curious. Okay, this looks good for me because I think things are going to collapse for Anton. As if queen here, take. So I'm going to win a couple pawns here at minimum, and yeah, everything's going to collapse for white. Very hard to hang on. Take this with we'll check. Um, let's just take this one too. Take this one while we're at it. And resigns. Rook F1, I was going to go Queen H5, which I think would force a Queen trade. This is losing. So thank you for the game, Anton. The people want to know about B4. That was the move I was worried about. So like right here, you've been doing a good job of organizing your, organizing your pieces so as to push back my pieces. B4 does trap the knight. Now, the thing I was thinking against this is I would have to play this move. But looking at it now, you can you can take with the queen. I was thinking bishop takes, I would go here, and mm, I'm not optimistic this is all that great either, but maybe there's some chance to defend. But looking at it now, queen takes, e5, you can take here. I have a feeling I'm just busted in this position. Let's see, though. Okay, not as bad as I thought. Plus two, we can live with in a blitz game. But yeah, that was probably the way to go before. So I think good play up till that point. I think I got a little um, over-exuberant with like maybe knight e5, knight e5 in particular. So thank you for the game. First game of the session. Shout out to Anton, regular viewer here. Let's keep going. Arliang, you're up. Let's play d4 in this one. c4. Uh, I'll invite the Nimzo Indian, bishop b4. Yeah, we'll go queen c2, trying to avoid any pawn structure damage. How is everyone? I feel like I haven't seen you guys for a while, because I uh, was on vacation last week, so I did not do my usual Lee, Ch Lee Chess plays. But I hope you're all well. I hope you didn't miss me too much. <laughs> I know, John Stevenson, you were asking in the chat if you, if you had the wrong day, because you didn't see me doing it last Sunday. Hello, Riemann and Aryan. I see you guys on YouTube, by the way. Cheers, everyone. And Dubious Hagrid, thank you for subbing to the to the uh, Lee Chess channel on Twitch with that Prime. Thank you very much. And thank you, Vince Vance. John, how do you feel about Magnus not defending his title? Well, I'm sad. I'm sad like uh, probably a lot of you. I am happy, though, silver lining, that he's not quitting chess entirely. Competitive chess, that is. So it sounds like he's still committed to playing tournaments. Um, I hear rumblings that he might play the Fisher Random Championship coming up this fall in Norway. He's mentioned 2,900 FIDE as his, his um, ultimate rating goal. So silver lining, he's still playing. So at least we have that. But yeah, I'm, I am sad. The World Championship is... Truly a unique event, and it's going to be a bummer not to see him playing it in the future. Okay, C5, so this hangs D5. I think I should probably go ahead and take it right away. Could also maybe insert this trade, but let's take D5 immediately. Knight C7 is a threat now, too. Everything else looking good about the stream, guys? Uh, the capture, the resolution. Again, it should be a little bit better than normal. Um, okay, I can't resist a, a small cheapo here. A little bit of a cheapo. Let's see how Black responds to this. Oh, you agree with that great Spanish Baldwin? Yeah. I think if you're a fan of chess, then you're a little bit sad about Magnus' decision. The cheapo I was trying to set up, by the way, if queen c8, queen takes c6, and then knight takes e7, I would win two minor pieces in that transaction because I win the queen back. This is still pretty good, but let me think. Maybe I take here and then take here. Looks 
looks nice. Mm, could also just take here. That's probably even simpler. Let's do that one. Will he come back to the World Championship at some point, do you think? I don't see any indication of that right now, but yeah, maybe he'll have uh, Michael Jordan retiring from basketball to play baseball and then coming back and um, <laughs> you know, trying to win another championship sort of moment. But I haven't seen any indication of that. Hello, casual player. It's going well. Yeah, I hope it's been good with you too. Hello, Nick Novotny. I see you. What's up, Queso Fresco as well? I've gotten a lot of nice messages recently about um, how much people enjoy Lee Chess Plays, how much it's uh, maybe a part of your regular Sunday. A lot of you have significant others involved in watching Lee Chess Plays, so thank you all for tuning in. And just a reminder, uh, Lee Chess is completely free to use, always will be free. They pledge to do so. And... Um, Take advantage of everything the site has to offer. It's, it's truly a community-driven site. Lee Chess frequently implements suggestions, feedback. So the site is about the users. Uh, so make sure you use everything, all these tabs. My, my favorite is under the Learn tab, the Study Tool, the Lee Chess Study Tool. If you ever want to like aggregate your games, analyze positions, Look at someone else's study that's been made public that you can learn from. Great place to do that. Okay, we're just putting the finishing touches on this game. I'm up the exchange plus a few pawns. Most importantly, I'm way up on the clock. Arliang, Yang, thank you for the game. So it seems to me you kind of lost the thread right around here. We're still in fairly normal Queen's Gambit decline territory. Usually the way that black develops is knight bd7, uh, rook e8, and then knight f8. And you tend to leave this bishop back for a little bit. I know you had a desire to trade the dark square bishops, which is reasonable, but that move does look a little bit cramping, I'd say. So definitely want to avoid knight fd7. Yeah, 50 plus challenge. You guys can see the challenges now. And you can see my accept random challenge button, so... There's total oversight. You know that I'm not like randomly picking people. Or, or sorry, uh, selectively picking people. It's just a plugin that selects a random opponent. Okay, and Beernat. I'll tell you guys how much bullet I've been playing recently on Lee Chess that I wanted to berserk this game. <laughs> I was like looking for the berserk button. <laughs> but we're not in an arena. Ah, uh, white doesn't hang their queen. If they were gonna hang it, they would have hung it instead of playing h3. This is kind of my usual way of playing against b4 or b3. I like going d5 and then bishop g4. I think it's just kind of a disruptive little system. So I like it. Okay, um, let's go g6. I'm gonna try to set up an opponent to this bishop here. We're gonna go bishop g7. Blue jean chessboard. That's right. Yeah, we got the denim chessboard. You know it. It's castle. We can also switch if we uh, get bored of this theme. I do switch off from time to time. Okay, let's go d4. I'm going to try to block this bishop. This is double-edged, but we'll see how white reacts. That's right, the jorts chessboard. <laughs> oh, thank you, Bradley. Yeah, appreciate that feedback. Cheers. All right, 94, yep. So I don't really want to take because that allows White's queen to come here. Ah, however, I see something compelling. Maybe I should take. I missed this before, but we're going to capture. Yeah, because if White took with the queen, I could effectively take here would be nice. So White takes this way. Now taking maybe is reasonable. Like I have a check here. Um, Yeah, actually that seems decent. Let's do it. Open the center. D3 I wasn't as thrilled by because white could just move their queen. Okay, now I have an in-between move. I can take here. I could also take here and try to trade down. I think this exposes the white king a little bit more, so let's go with that one. 
take queen d4, queen h4. Those are both ideas here. This bishop is pretty bad for white. So how do I want to play this? Maybe knight d7 or queen d4 check first. Let's go knight d7. Hmm, I wonder white is, what white is up to <laughs> when you see a move like that. Let's go here. Could check as well, but I'm going to hold off on the check for the time being because I might want to play my queen to a different square. We shall see. The dream here would be to get the queen out somewhere, like check, and then rook d8 and plug the rook on d4 when white inevitably puts their queen here to try to pin my knight. Hmm, okay. So I get the sense white's trying to castle by hand here. Usually if someone plays a move like that, that's what they have in mind. It's a reasonable plan, but let's go check now, and I'm going to win this pawn probably. Maybe white will try to bail up this way to get back, but this pawn is undefended. Let's go here first, though. I don't think I quite need to take it yet, so we'll just build. I have such good control over the position, I can afford to do this. Hello, Baron Von Chicken Pants. Baron says, I just tried clicking on your Lee Chess alerts to see what they were. What do you mean by my Lee Chess alerts? Yeah, we'll take this one. Change pieces? What do you suggest? This is the uh, Maestro piece set, by the way, which is this one. Yeah, Maestro. In my experience, most people use one of these first two, but I'm kind of partial to this one from time to time. Um, should I take D2? I think I'm just going to take here, especially in the interest of time. Looks a lot simpler. Let's go here. I'm already up two pawns, so I don't feel a great need to try to win a further pawn. We're just going to try to win this endgame. Maybe e5, block the bishop. Make sure e5 can't be played by white. Mm, there, 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 there. Uh, let's just take this. Just capture. Rook coming in. Very passive situation by white. And now, this is a winning king and pawn ending. Let's play here for good measure. Lock off all the squares. No breaks for white. Two pawns versus two pawns, you can't break through. If it was three versus three, I would have to uh, be mindful of a pawn push in the middle. You guys have probably encountered that tactical idea before. But two versus two, there's never a breakthrough because you can always take or push. There's not enough uh, tension for there to be a breakthrough. Hence why that structure is sometimes called the padlock pawn structure with the pawns opposing one another like that the padlock pawn structure okay let's go here check and let's just make sure i can win this go here checkmate Okay, I cut that a little close, but we got the job done. Oh, that was a rated game, too. <laughs> so I'm, I'm casually talking about the padlock pawn structure. But um, I do have to watch my time, as usual. So that's just a, a good end game takeaway for you guys. Maybe even in the middle game, sometimes breaks like that can be of relevance. But you do not need to sweat something like this, specifically two versus two with one rank in between. Again, though, if I had a pawn here and white had a pawn here, White would push this middle pawn, and that would actually break through. That would actually break through. And if you're curious why, I recommend setting that up and playing through the various permutations. You have to sacrifice two pawns to do it, but it does break through. Did I have 23 knight takes f1? Um, oh, yeah, I did, actually. Nice. Didn't notice that. That was an in-between check. Very good. Dave B's also bruh, and Vince Vance all saw it.
I was on autopilot mode trading down, but that would have been a nice one. So actually, 93 was even stronger than I thought. Wins in exchange. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for the game, and Beernet. I think... I think here... This position already looks pretty good for me, I think, in view of uh, the capture possibility. But probably you do have to take back D takes E3. I thought maybe check here, but I think that move is more or less forced. D takes E3. Thanks for the game. Okay, Wilbury, you're up next. 1671, good luck. Can I show the three versus three later? Uh, maybe I'll show it on my own stream at some point. But we have to take every opportunity we can to get more games in. But for sure, I, I encourage you to set that up. Go to, if you want, you can go to tools and analysis board, and you can input it. You can set it right up for yourself. Definitely worth your time to check it out and understand why the three verse three with one uh, file in between works for the side whose pawns are further up the board if you push the middle pawn. If you have the move and you push the middle pawn. And to prevent it, the other side, if they were on move, they would push their middle pawn. Okay, e5. I can't go here because this is undefended, so let's play this one. Okay, but now this works. Now this is a fork. Oh, you need board editor to set up the position? Ah, oh, yeah, go there. That would be even easier. I think, I want to say you can do it in analysis board too, but you might need the FEN or the PGN. You learned the three verse three from Capablanca's book. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. His uh, chess primer. Okay, now knight d6 is the one thing I got to watch out for here. Mm, let's just play... Mm. Let's go queen b6. I was family. Family's great. Yeah. They are doing well. Hope yours is too. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. <laughs> I see your comment from last game. Okay, so I'm defending D4. I'm up a piece here. I've got a nice little pawn structure going on too. I could see something happening like if this, I can take here, looking for e2, looking for a little discovery. Otherwise, I'm just going to go bishop e7 and probably castle. It's a nice day here. It's a little cooler. It's probably like um, 71 Fahrenheit. What, what would that be Celsius? Like 19 Celsius? Does that sound about right? And it's much needed. I know uh, for a lot of you guys around the world, it's been very, very hot. I know it has here too. So I'm I'm really digging this weather. It's perfect for Lee Chess plays with my door open. Let's go Queen D4. White didn't fall fall for my shenanigans. Eh, then there's Bishop there. Nah, that's fine. That's fine. Mm, actually, maybe it's not fine. I don't know. I'm going to tuck this here just to be safe because maybe white could have played g4 and then knight d6 in the previous position. Maybe, maybe. Okay, now let's do this. I'm going for h5, h4. h4 and possibly all the way to h3 or maybe this. We're going to open up that white king. So if here, I think this move doesn't quite work, but maybe h3 is good instead. Get at that light square bishop. Bishop f3, knight h4. <laughs> Are you trolling, defuser? Oh, you're right. Okay, got it. Okay. 71 Fahrenheit is 21. 21.6 cells. Okay, got it. That's good to know.
that's pleasant. That's pleasant. I mean, you're not going to be like super comfortable at the beach, but the sun is out. If the sun's out with that temperature, it's still pretty pleasant. Okay, this is looking good. Just wrapping this up. I've got knight f3 dropping in the position. White's queen's under attack. I think you kind of got to go queen d3 here, but white doesn't want to have to do it. All right. Common trick Celsius to Fahrenheit is double and add 28. Interesting. Okay, I'll have to keep that in mind, that conversion. Thank you for the game, Wilbury. Yeah, so... Always got to watch this construction with d4 forking the two minors. Fork on the bishop on e3 and the knight on c3. Truthfully, I don't really like bishop e3. I think you should play like f4 here would be a bit more common of a way to handle this. So that already puts you in some danger. Again, I can't do it yet. But I think after knight c6, you got to take some measure to stop it. And given that your pawn on e5 is also under attack... The engine's indicating this is already not a good position for you. So, yeah, probably bishop e3 was a little suspect. Okay, thank you for the game. Do you guys get this, this prompt a lot of times now? We're always storing your variations in your browser cache for safekeeping and sharing. Consider making a study. And that, that's the tool I was talking about, by the way, the study tool. So feel free to check that out. Okay, on to the next game. Levi Gibson. Good luck to you, 1661. Um, let's play let's play E4. I haven't played E4 yet today. Yeah, that is a new feature. Yep. Lee Chess is always iterating, always improving. You like chilling at 273 Calvin? <laughs> nice. Levi, are you there? There we go. Okay, D6. Let's do this. Pierce. Pierce opening on the board. How is black going to handle this? Knight F6. All right. We're going to get the pure Pierce. Okay, I'm going to play... Let's go Bishop E3. And then Knight F3. Kind of mixing like um, a 150 attack and a classical. I think there's some com compelling variations here. Um, let's go bishop d3. Hmm, bishop g4. Interesting. Let's take that. Castle now. We're going to get an opposite side castling affair. And we'll see how this shapes up. I'll be curious. Mm -hmm. Why is it called the 150 attack? I don't really remember. I feel like I looked it up one time, but I don't remember. Someone in the chat will know. All right, let's take. And now I'm looking for this. I'm looking for the pawn tension. The pawn tension between the H pawn and the G pawn. Okay, now, because I have the two pieces here, like now I have to be a little concerned about that advance. However, one thing I notice, if, I, if black gets this in, I can maybe go after this. Um... I don't know, though. This, this is an interesting moment in the attack. Because I would prefer not to have to slow down here and defend. But maybe I do. Nah, let's go bishop c5. I feel like that's the most responsible move. Pins the knight. The queen's going to be tethered to the, to the defense of that knight. Takes the sting out of this. So should be okay. Where to put my knight? <clears throat> Let's go here. I'm going to use this knight to defend the bishop just as a hedge in case black plays queen a5. I can always play b3. This has some Sicilian dragon type vibes to it with black having the bishop here. Rook b8. I don't know about that move. That seems a little bit slow to me. So therefore, I'm thinking about just continuing my attack. And I've got all these squares covered pretty well, so I don't think the rook is doing a whole lot here. Queen a5, I can play b3 if needed. Or maybe even take here is another option. 
Take, take, take. I got to be a little concerned about my king safety, though. So I think I'm going to actually play b3. Just executive decision. Ooh, but then bishop h6. Hold on. Maybe I should go here first. This might be the most accurate way to play of all. Yeah, actually, I really like the look of this move. Now that I thought about it for a, a second. So if he takes the knight, that's fine. Because I'm going to take here, and I think I'm going to crash through. It's very nice to put this bishop in jail, though, on h8. Just completely detain that piece. Because now this looks more legit if I want to go for it. My king's kind of slipping away also. So I think I'm going to do that. Let's go for it. There's some violent ways black can play this, but I don't quite buy it. I just don't think black's going to have enough firepower. And they're in a situation where they're probably going to get mated around their own king if their attack ever stalls out. So, yeah, let's take here. There's only one move in this position I'm, like, mildly worried about. It was rook takes b2. Um, but I, I think even that would not have worked. Let's take here now. Looks scary, but concretely, what's black really going to do? I'm running away. Black's actually pushing me in the direction I want to run. Yusuf is, thanks for the prime. Sub into the Lee Chess channel. Appreciate it. Man, this is made on G7. Okay. Thank you, Levi Gibson. Yes, we have a spirited discussion. People telling me the... There's a lot of good mathematicians and people who just know their, their math quite well uh, in the chess world, so... <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. I'll get better with my conversion. I want to be able to do it just instantaneously, so these shortcuts are nice. Okay, so it doesn't like d5. doesn't really like my position. Yeah, I think knight d4 definitely would have been more principled. Uh, jumping the knight in. Oh, my keyboard is being a little slow here. Sorry. Okay, it doesn't like bishop c5, though. That's interesting. Bishop c5, not the best way to attack. I should play h5, allow d4, and then just brute force continue with this, or maybe bishop c4. That's interesting to me, so I, th I think one of the points is if this, I always have a check here if needed. But due to some elaborate counter tactics, the, the fork of the two pieces isn't working so well. Yeah, and as played, queen a5. I do think h6 is a nice way to handle this. Engine also says just bishop takes e7 right away. I was a little bit concerned, though, if black could ever throw this move in and push my king in this direction. But even that seems like nothing special. Even if I take here, let's say. Um, black's just running out of gas. Not quite working. As played, the only thing I was semi-concerned about was right here, rook takes b2. But it appears like that's a paper tiger as well. Here, king c1. Yeah, just nothing's really working for black when I have this window. All right, so thank you for the game. Levi, I think knight d4 would have been definitely the best way to play. Knight e7, just a little bit too passive against the two bishops. And, and that's really common when you take g4 and then try to prepare e5. Uh, or the knight out first and then e5, you want to be able to send the knight forward if, if possible. Okay, good game. <laughs> Vladislav Artemyev up next, 1657. Shout out to Artemyev. He's there. His rating got demoted a little bit, but we're not taking him for granted. <laughs> Have fun. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's play knight f6. We played once before, huh? Okay. Go e6. Our Temyev really fell off. <laughs> Our Temyev's end games are really... He's an interesting player. Um, I've looked at his games in the past, and I've been pretty impressed with certain parts of his game. He also plays a lot of different openings. 
it's really hard to like pin him down in the openings, but some of his end games are are quite impressive. He's a grinder. I'll go for D5. Yeah, that's true. I have not seen him playing online. It's a great point. It's cool he's coming out of um, online retirement to play Lee Chess plays. <laughs> but no, that's a good point. I have not seen him online. 150 attack may be derived from the chess rating from the British chess circuit. A player with a 150 is likely a novice at best. And the attack in that opening is directed is direct that a weak player can win with it. I think you're right. It has something to do with uh, ECF ratings. Yeah, the English Chess Federation ratings. That does sound correct now that you say that. Okay, so we're just getting in C5 when it's when it's defended multiple times. Maybe we'll see some sort of hanging pawn situation where we get a big trade here and I get the pawns on D5 and C5 at the end with these pawns wiped out for white. Okay, Queen D2. Hmm. I don't know about that one. I'm going to take here and open the bishop. Because I'm thinking if white takes here, I might play bishop takes f3. Looks awfully tempting. Could also play b5. But now let's let's go for this. And then knight e5. A bit of activity all of a sudden. Threatening this. Eyeing up the bishop as well. Maybe I take d4 too. How do you come back from rough tournaments? Uh, asked GZT. They had a bad tournament yesterday, one out of four. Well, if you're playing tournaments in the first place, I think that's already a big victory because that puts you ahead of many players. Like you're taking your chess improvement seriously. So know that just the act of playing the tournaments is one of the best things you can do for your game. That should make you feel pretty good in the short term. Um, so take a little time off. You know, if the tournament just concluded... Set the games aside for a couple of days, but then go back and analyze them and try to be really honest with yourself about what happens and what you're going to do differently. I recommend actually making a Lee Chess study to do that. Study, input the games. You're going to have to do it manually because uh, it was an over-the-board tournament, but input the games, see where you can improve. And trust me, you'll really thank yourself for doing that. Use the database, use the engine, add your own thoughts and comments first. I would recommend that. Hello, start, by the way. Okay, so I'm starting to think about um, how I can attack the White King. This move almost looks like a winner immediately. It's maybe not quite winning, but it's it's very uncomfortable for white. Because if white's not careful, my queen is going to reach g5, and I'm going to mate on g2. Yeah, I think this was the only move. Now, if I go here, white's knight is covering. So I'd like to, in theory, eliminate this. Problem is I take here, check, white has this. Ah, but now I see I have knight e2 against that. So I think that's probably what we're going to do. I even have knight h3, even better. So check. Yeah, because knight e2, I, I would lose the knight. I would take the queen, but knight h3 is even cleaner, probably. Mm-hmm. And now check. White's pinned. So we're going to pick the queen up for a piece. The knight looks a little bit awkwardly placed at the end. So maybe my opponent resigns. Thank you for the game. Maybe something like um, king g2, bishop takes g3, f takes g3, and try to say that this is trapped. But uh, e even if it were lost, this is totally winning still. Probably go here. Bit of a pin, defend the knight, maybe threaten this in the future. Okay, so... I think you're set up out of the opening. Probably not the best. I, I really didn't like queen d2. I think you should start bringing the rooks over. D1, C1 would be the normal placement here. Vladislav. Because uh, queen D2 led to this sequence where I feel like these swaps definitely favor black with knight E5 coming. Your structure's a little damaged. You have the bishop pair, but you're kind of scrambling here. 
Okay, thank you for the game. Harlequin is up next. Let's play Knight F3 in this one. Does anyone ever get in fights at chess tournaments? Well, I've seen that happen before. <laughs> and I've heard of it happening other places, but I can't say that that's, that's the norm. <laughs> I think it's more likely to happen in casual tournaments. But I have seen it happen in uh, serious events every once in a while. Not like full-on fights, but people getting annoyed and almost coming, coming to blows. Okay, so we have a Terash. I think I need a better line against this because I never really seem to get much out of this opening. It's kind of an underrated defense for black, I think. It's a little tough to play at times for black because you do end up with an isolate upon in almost all cases if white wants. But it's really not bad at all. Oh, yeah, I saw that, that story, Bakus. I think I saw that story a while back. Okay, castle. So black committed to a very early bishop e6. I'm trying to think if that's exploitable, my me. Something like knight e5? I don't know. Not too convinced that I have anything here. Let's go uh, bishop e3. <clears throat> I'm just playing normally. Wasn't there some chess robot that got really angry over losing recently? Yeah, so unfortunately there was, I think it was an eight-year-old kid who um, had his finger broken by this automated chess claw, basically, in Russia. This automated system that has been around for a while and looks pretty impressive, but is also pretty dangerous. Let's go after this pawn on c6. So I think ideally for black, they would be castled here already. This looks a little shaky for black. Maybe they can defend though, but it looks a bit tender here and here. Mm -hmm. Rook c8. So if I go here, rook c7, and I wish my bishop could get to the place where my knight is, but that can't easily happen. Uh, maybe knight c5. Let's go knight c5. Queen d3 was another option, but I think I like this one because not only can I take this, but I see a little combo here. We're going to go here, then take the knight, and then bishop c5 and win the exchange at the end. That's not the robot's fault. I guess technically you're right. It's the fault of the, of the programmer that there were no fail safes. <laughs> Okay, let's go here now. Nah, let's play b3 first. We'll just guard this pawn. So I'm up the exchange. Still going to try to target these pawns. So again, maybe queen d3 on the next move. Very safe king. This should be a technical win. Oh, the kid was back playing the next day. Oh, that's good. That's good to hear. That robot was aggressive, though, because um, that robot slash claw thing has been around for a while. I think I mentioned this on a previously chess plays, or it might have been on my own stream, but you can find videos of that thing playing against Grisha, Kramnik at like chess expos in the past and, and tournaments in the past. And it looks like more or less the same thing. But even like Grisha and Kramnik, I think, were a little taken aback by how aggressive it was at the time. It appears like not much has changed. <laughs> All right, let's go here. Attack this pawn. Wow. A couple people are blaming the kid. <laughs> Kid reached the, the piece too early, resulting in him getting hurt. I mean, I would contest if you're going to allow an eight-year-old to play like an automatic claw that can crush your fingers, that you should maybe build in some 
protection against that happening. <laughs> That's just me, though. Some of you are ruthless. Take. If you've ever been around kids, they fidget all the time. They don't uh, follow instructions to the T. <laughs> you you got to build that into your model. Oh, could I have played Rook D8? Rook D8 was actually more directly winning. But now I get a chance for double check and mate. Okay, thanks for the game, Harlequin. And <laughs> what you guys are even talking about in the in the Lee Chess chat. So that early bishop e6, it may not register as a massive mistake, but I do think that's a bit of an error. Black usually starts with knight c6, then knight f6, and tries to quickly get castled here. Yeah. Looks like after knight c5, you already have to be pretty careful to avoid losing here. Engine's recommending queen e7. Yeah, because the game did run into this. Bishop c5 and already pretty much a winning position for white. Yeah. I probably missed a few things, huh? Queen b8. Queen b8, I guess, rook c8 here, though. Yeah, this would have been faster. Rook d8. Whereupon this is the best move to try to prolong the game. Probably it's John's fault. Yes, it's my fault. That the kid's finger was broken. Always blame John. <laughs> okay. Um, thanks for the game, Harlequin. That's Saru Gambit. Good to see you again. We played a couple games on Lee Chess Plays in the past. Good luck to you. <laughs> Thank you, Might Reach. E King Master Puppet says the idea. Are you there, Thessaru Gambit? The idea that GMs have played the claw and been afraid of it, and yet nothing has been changed, is scary. <laughs> yeah. I like how we're calling it the claw, too, like in Toy Story. The claw. All right, we got to abort this game. Sorry, Thessaru Gambit, you might be AFK, but you can always challenge again. Abu Bakr. Abu Bak Severner up next. Good luck to you. We're playing a Sicilian. Um, let's play let's play knight c6 on move two. I don't play a whole lot of knight c6. You can play d6, e6, knight c6, g6. Those are the most legit moves on move two. In the Sicilian. Go for the Fianchetto. I have mentioned before, I think the accelerated and hyper accelerated dragon, which we're now transposing into, um, accelerated dragon, I think those are a bit underrated uh, at the amateur level. Okay, knight f6. A lot of players do not get the move order right here for white. They'll play like queen d2 too early. It should be two. Uh, I think I should castle first, but watch for me to get in a quick d5. That's usually going to be the antidote to this. Hence why the bishop, in theory, belongs on c4 for white to try to guard this square a bit better. <coughs> Your coach bullies you for playing the dragon. Oof. Well, the pure dragon, I think, at the highest level is considered a little risky or maybe depressing for black. I think there's ways, like with the nine... Castle's queen side line. White can just kind of kill the game and enjoy a slight advantage. Um, but I don't think that should like greatly dissuade you from playing it. Maybe I should have played d5 before castling. I'll have to look this up. Ooh, okay. So you wanted to play something like bishop f3 there. Would it would have been better? Because now I can take here. But bishop f3, I would have had gone like queen c4 to keep the knight guarded. Now White loses a piece. Why is it called Accelerated Dragon? What are you accelerating? So in the Accelerated Dragon, you don't play d6 first. Um, 
and you might therefore be able to play d5 in one move. Whereas in the normal dragon, you play d6, and then Fianchetto your, your bishop. Okay, a test for white's long-range visualization coming up is when I put my bishop on b7, will white see that I'm threatening queen takes g2 mate? I think white's going to see it. I think white is going to defend against it. However, this is a mistake a lot of people will make. They just, they only look at a certain part of the board. Yes, and very good. White plays f3, blocking it. So watch, watch, watch your long-range diagonal moves. Hyper-accelerated is when you play g6 on move two. Accelerated is when you go knight c6, followed by g6. So you, yeah, hyper-accelerated, you're really accelerating the fianchetto. If you want to think about it that way, it's just the speed at which you're fianchettoing. But the, the, the d pawn thing is just a consequence of it, I suppose, an important one, but um, the accelerating, not accelerating thing is, is with the fianchetto. I'm thinking about taking here and then bishop d4. Pretty direct. But let's, let's just take another pawn. This looks fine too. Mm, and now that bishop is hanging. Take. Another test for white. Okay, white resigns. Yeah, that was another piece. So, I did play d5, but I actually wonder if the timing of that is off a little bit. No, it's fine. Do they play it here or here? Because I think you can play it here as well. Let's just see in the master's database. Now it looks like they usually do castle and then d5. Okay. So, I think white's best way of playing against this would be to trade and then play bishop f3. Wow, it looks like this has a lot of draws in the database. Queen a5. Ah, interesting. Okay, so you actually give up a pawn here. I'm not familiar with this particular uh, sequence. But you give up a pawn, and then I guess you can go after this pawn is the argument. Interesting. So ultimately, white doesn't have much here, according to the stats and what I see with the engine. Maybe a small edge. So, yeah, the way I played it, this is more of a hyper-accelerated approach. Knight c6 and then g6. And white did end up playing d4. Um, this would be the normal dragon. You go d6 first, you trade, you play knight f6, and then g6. That's your standard dragon. And hyper-accelerated would be g6, where you really make a point to Fianchetto right away. These move orders all have their, have their advantages and disadvantages. This is the most active from the jump. However, it does afford white the possibility of playing this capture here, because you don't have a knight on c6. This is a whole separate uh, variation, a whole different kettle of fish. You have to be ready for this. Okay, thanks for the game. This is an interesting uh, stat. So my opponent had zero inaccuracy, zero mistakes, but just one blunder for a 60 average centi pawn loss. I had a nine average centi pawn loss. So... Basically, white played fine, just not for, except for h3. Although I would argue bishop d2 is probably <laughs> a mistake at the end, but the position's far gone anyways. Thanks for the game. Go Swaim. You're up next. Let's play English c4. Good luck to you. Good luck, good luck. Oh, yes, there's also the Meraxi bind. Yes, that's an important aspect. So in the um, hyper-accelerated and the accelerated, you do have to deal with the Meraxi potentially as well, which is when white plays c4 and only then knight c3. So that's, an, uh, that's a disadvantage of those move orders if you don't like playing against the Meraxi bind. Okay, we're in another QGD. I'm going to play it a little bit different this time. I usually take and go bishop g5, but we'll play it like this. Ragozin, okay. This is a good line for black if they know what they're doing. A lot of like amateur players, I noticed they kind of just play this move because it looks active. Um I don't know. I feel like that's maybe not the best reasoning to play a certain line, but it is possible to play that way. Q 
Okay, we'll go back here, bishop d3. In my experience, this is usually the right retreat. A lot of people want to keep their bishop there and play it to b3, but this bishop operates more effectively here where it's not hindered by the enemy pawns. Okay, let's go, uh, let's go rook c1. I'm going to try to play against these squares more than likely. And castle, maybe knight e4 coming up. We shall see. I think this position's already a little tricky for black, because if you go for this, you would like to play the move c5, but c5 is going to be hard for black to achieve. And here, I can win a pawn. I can take and use the pin. What's the idea behind the Rogozin? Interesting question. I'm not a, an expert on the Rogozin for black by any means, but I think the idea is to perhaps time like a d-take c4 type move as well as generate pressure on the knight in some cases. Like um, when white has the bishop on g5, there are some cases where black will go h6, bishop h4, pawn g5, and then knight e4. Try to generate pressure here. Sometimes they go c5, queen a5 in certain cases. So it's kind of an active way to um, play against the knight on c3, potentially take the pawn on c4 at some point too. Okay, let's go here, hit the queen. If e5, I just take. I've got discoveries, so I'm not worried about this knight being lost. Hello, Pumpizer. Thank you for joining. So we're up upon here, doing really well. Knight d6, knight c7, I feel like my knight's a little off sides, although I could get it back in the game, but let's go here. Hit the bishop. Yeah, you bet, my reach. You bet. We'll take. Okay, nice grip on the position now. What to do next? Knight e5, queen b3. Queen b3 looks pretty legit. Let's do that. Hit the bishop. What is your opinion of the Rui Lopez, and what variation is your favorite? Yeah, Rui Lopez is a, quite a rich opening. I think it's no wonder that it's still considered one of um, the most important battlegrounds in chess. You see a lot of Berlin games at the top level. And I think it's good for every player to play it from one of the sides, at least, and maybe both sides at some point in their, in their chess career. As far as my favorite variation, I used to play... From the black side, the closed Rui Lopez a fair amount. Specifically, the um, Zaitsev variation, which involves the uh, light square bishop coming to b7, like in this position. Is this a case where maybe I want to take this way? Let's do it. Normally, I'm not a big fan of this capture, but I get the uh, attack here, so let's go for it. I actually think the Marshall Gambit is pretty fascinating, too. I have this pawn I can try to take too, by the way. So the Marshall Gambit, real interesting to me. Um, unfortunately, it kind of seems pretty drudge. <laughs> so you have to be willing to play some pretty dry positions that computers have worked out quite thoroughly. Now, if Black's pawn were gone, Black would be checkmating here. But fortunately for me, that pawn is on C6. The Zaitsev has some cool variations. It does. Unfortunately, the theory has been worked out really, really well there, too. But there's some, some famous, um, like, uh, Karpov-Kasparov uh, games from their world championship with Kasparov as white, like, trying to crack that variation when Kramnik would, or, uh, Karpov would play it. Some pretty fascinating stuff there from, like, the 1980s. Yeah, thanks for the game. Thank you, thank you. So, in this variation, usually, if you're going to take c4, it's not when white can just recapture. Don't know that I like that very much, especially b5. I feel like b5 is not the right approach. So, Ghost Wayne, if you're not too familiar with the Rogozin theory, I would actually recommend just sticking the bishop on e7. It's way simpler to play this way. 
you break a pin that white can set up and you get ready to castle. Just a lot easier to handle. Thanks for the game. Okay, moving right along here. Leon the Great One, good luck to you. Leon the Professional, maybe. <laughs> okay, let's play a French defense. The French defense is probably one of my least played openings against E4. But let's try it out. Where are my French players in the chat? All, uh, all three of you. <laughs> right here, it says Twitch Watcher. Nice. <laughs> Raise your hands. Oh, the Archangel variation. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting line of the Rui as well. Okay, we'll take. Okay, let's see if my opponent blunders a typical tactic here. I don't think they will. But you never know. You never know. French players will know what tactic I'm talking about. Thing is, if you play the French at the amateur level, especially below like 1600, ooh, my opponent actually does blunder it. Um, you're going to face the exchange variation a ton and also the advanced variation. So specifically when this happens, at the amateur level, you almost only see these two moves. And it can get pretty boring sometimes. The higher levels, you tend to see like what my opponent did a little more. Knight c3 or the Terash, which is knight d2. There's some fascinating stuff there, don't get me wrong, but it's not everyone's cup of tea. Okay, um, should I take here first? Just thinking if there's any danger to me. I don't think there is yet, so let's take. Probably castle now. But yeah, this knight takes e5 thing. Again, if you play the French at the amateur level, you're going to get that tactic many, many times. A lot of people do pin the knight, but uh, it wins a pawn because if they take here, we're taking back with the knight to save it. On Scandi, what's the difference between pawn to c6 and knight c6 directly? Which one do you prefer? Well, knight c6 in general is just going to be a lot more active. So that is a big difference itself. Um, I typically have played the pawn c6 versions. It's more stable. It's more strategic. But you can play it actively. If you play like the um, uh, knight f6 on move 2 variation of the Scandinavian, like the modern Scandinavian they call it, you might have some situations where you play knight c6 more liberally than in the traditional Scandi. Okay, so I'm up a pawn here. I got a better structure too. I can target this backward pawn. If rook b1, I'm probably going to stick the bishop here. I'm loving my knight on f5. That's a great piece. Rook a3 looks pretty good here. I like it. Attack the bishop. Also hit this pawn. Uh, maybe white can retreat, actually. That might not have been the best move for me. I don't think it's going to like hurt me, per se, but I think bishop d2 is actually pretty okay here. Reason being, bishop d2, if I take here, white has bishop b4, which I'm just now noticing. Forks the two rooks, so... Okay, let's just go back. Yeah, this looks fine. Bishop here, I can play b6. What do I do on e4, e6, knight c3, d5, knight f3, knight f6? Okay, white goes back here to target. How about here now? How about this one? So, sorry, e4, e6, knight c3, d5, knight f3, knight f6. What do I do for white there? Oh, you were asking someone in the chat. Okay. Sorry about that. I would play e5 if I were white in that position. Okay, Leon is running short on time here. I maybe could have taken this pawn, by the way. But um, there were some potential complications I didn't want to allow. Queen goes back to d1. What next? Again, if here there's bishop d2, it's a little bit annoying. Let's go here. This seems reasonable. Then I, I maybe can prepare this in the future. Because bishop b4 wouldn't attack both rooks. Ooh, take. Take. Should I keep taking? Why not? 
Why not, right? Rook d1, I have check. Go in the, the bishop here. And I think I can take with the queen now. Because if here, I'm back ranking my opponent. Yeah, no check. Mm, let's give a check. Taking all white's pieces. What's the fastest way to mate here? Probably like a rook lift or something. Or this. Okay. Leon, thank you for the game. Quick analysis here. Yeah, so in this winnower variation, usually white is pretty quick to play a3 to challenge the bishop. I think you were a little wishy-washy on your move order, especially bishop b5 check. Wasn't a big fan of that. I think that um, the bishop's usually misplaced here. Again, you can kind of see coming up when bishop d7 hits, which the engine doesn't even like, but you got to watch knight take c5. Does the engine want you to take c5 here? Saying a4 or play bishop back to e2, both of which would take care of the problem, actually, because now the bishop's defended, so I can't do this anymore. Thanks for the thanks for the game. I'm gonna have to grab my um, no shortcuts. Good luck to you. My cord to charge my keyboard. One second. I don't know if you guys have experienced this. Ooh, Scandinavian. I love the skin. I don't know if you guys have experienced this per se, but I had a wireless keyboard many years ago. And it was awesome. I never had any issues with it. I bought like a relatively new Logitech wireless keyboard recently. It's so much worse than the old one that I have. Its battery life is not great. It uh, constantly like misfires and like lags when I'm typing. So in my, my uh, hugely anecdotal experience of like just two cases of having a keyboard... Wireless keyboard, that is. I got a, I got a dud or something. And the technology uh, slid back. <laughs> is it Bluetooth versus a wireless connector thing? I think it's both, technically. But I don't use the Bluetooth. Let's go here. Yeah, let's go knight e4. Attack the bishop. Feels like you got a keyboard from the 1950s. It, it honestly might be a dud. But I don't know, because it also just might be the case that it works that way. But it's, you know, like a $90, $100 USD keyboard, so I feel like it should be better. Let's play e5. I'm going to try to cramp my opponent. And if here, I'll probably play c3. It's probably a fake or was slightly broken. Well, I got it directly from Logitech, so I'd be surprised if it was a fake. But it might be broken, yeah. Okay, this move looks a little weak because I think I can take here. This pawn is kind of loose. Uh, yeah, take with check. I think should be fine. And now prop up the bishop. Looks all right. I mean, maybe black could get creative here, do something like that, but I don't think I greatly fear that. Hello, two bits. It's going well. Thank you. We're just hanging out. We're on the uh, second half of League Chess Plays today. It's been a lot of fun. No one has taken me down yet, yet today, but I did have a close call against Anton in the very first game. Check. Watch those bishops. They're loose. King e8, I think, is forced here. Otherwise, black's going to have a hard time. I personally prefer wired keyboard and a wireless mouse. I think that might be the way to go, casual player. I think I agree with you. Although I do currently use a wired mouse, but I might have to get a new one. C4? Seems to check out. Bishop G5, also a good move, but let's go C4. 
My Lee Chess username is Fins because I was listening to the Jimmy Buffett song called Fins when uh, I originally made my Fins related accounts. <laughs> That's literally the story. What do I play against the French? Uh, good question, Sangha. I don't really have a weapon I seriously prefer against the French for white. I would love to hear someone give me like a, a knockout weapon. But I just find the French annoying for both sides. <laughs> I don't really like to play it as black. I don't like the idea of it for black. Locking in the light square bishop just is antithetical to my sensibilities about coordination of, in, of pieces in chess. And even from the white side, I'm like just annoyed when I face it. I usually play Terash or sometimes Knight C3, like in that last game. Um, sometimes I play King's Indian attack. But again, I don't have a weapon I just hugely prefer compared to others. Ortho Schnapp Gambit. <laughs> yeah, I know some of you guys like that. Poor shortcuts. I feel like they've just been playing against this monster bishop on E6 for the past several moves. Here's an IM saying he does not have a weapon against the French. I really don't. Not the one, not one that I prefer greatly. Okay, there's a check here, but that's about it. So let's just push. There's another check, but then we tuck, tuck in here. King B1. And this is guarded too. King's Indian attack is, is a decent weapon, I'd say, against the French. I'd say King's Indian attack is better against the French than it is against other lines after e4. Yes, thank you, no shortcuts for the game. So these positions can be kind of delicate when you're playing the uh, black side of the Scandi. I personally think knight takes e4 is maybe not the way to go here. Like, maybe you should go knight d5. If you do play knight takes e4, let's think. Um... I don't know. Maybe, maybe the engine will indicate something here. Like perhaps you could play e5, even though it leaves this a little weak. F5, though, it feels like it feels like uh, black is a, l a little bit worse there. But let's check this moment. Okay, it says it's okay, but still showing about a plus one advantage. F6, maybe digging in. Yeah. So you could look earlier in this in this setup how to improve. Um, you did play bishop g4 awfully early. Since I play this line two from the black side, I, I sometimes warn my students, don't play bishop g4 this early. You almost always want to start with knight f6. It's more flexible. So you might look at some of the earlier decisions that you made. Although you set up a somewhat normal scanty position, I think some of these can be second-guessed. Actually here, engine saying you, should, you can be ambitious. You can do this, which would be really interesting. I can't say that occurred to me in the game, but... Um, playing for an attack. But yeah, maybe take a look at the early move order again. Okay, ha ha ha. Let's do this. Good luck to you. You shall make a brilliancy. Okay. <laughs> I look forward to seeing that. Let's play knight f3 this time. All right, I'm cool with Queen's Indian, if you want to go Queen's Indian style. I was studying this recently, Queen A4. I've had some success with this recently. Hello, Maurice on YouTube says, Hi, John. Is it really worth the time to go for GM in your case? What perks are there, really? Yeah, truthfully, there's not that many advantages to it. As awesome and as... Uh, incredible a title it is. Aside from like pure personal fulfillment, there's no tangible advantages I can point to that would outweigh the time, energy, cost involved. <laughs> so that's that's my opinion. I think most IMs are probably going to agree with that. But um, it's not going to like change my 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 life in any meaningful way. International master sounds cooler. Exactly. And as I've said many times, it's better to be known as a strong IM than a weak GM. 
you always have to bear that in mind. Strong I am greater than weak GM. <laughs> Just like a strong uh, 1400 is better than a weak 1500, like a 1501, 1502. Nah, get out of there with that. You want to be like a 1497, a 1498, a 1499. Really assert your, uh, your rating dominance and your, your level of comfort, really, with just high, having a high rating that's not at one of those like nice round 100-point numbers. <laughs> 1499, exactly right. Why price your product at $15 when you can use psychological marketing to price it at $14.99? <laughs> Should I go here? I don't know if that move works, though. I really want to play it, but I'm not sure it works. What else could I do here? I don't know. Let's just play it. It looks kind of scary, so I'm curious what Black's going to do. Great rationale for playing a move, right? It looks scary. Hello, Wonder Two Kind says hello from South Africa. Thank you for tuning in. Who's the most underrated GM in your opinion? Ooh, this can get spicy now. Okay, I was actually more worried about take and then queen b7 and just trying to take d4. G5, though, I feel like this should be a bridge too far because this queen's a little overloaded, you know? Knight g4 is the move that just jumps off the page to me here. Uh, maybe knight d7 even. Although that can probably transpose. Let's go knight g4. Unleash this. So if take, I'm taking here with check. Yeah, I think black's going to have problems with their king. Yep, check. So if king here, I have this check if I want. I also have knight e8. 98 wins the exchange. Let's think for a second. Which do I prefer? 98, although it wins an exchange, it actually might trap my queen because uh, there's knight c6 at that point. So I think I'm going to go with this one and then take here. Maybe take b7 first, actually, just to be real clean about this. Mm-hmm. You know what I really want to try to? Okay, let's take here first. Queen C2 there. In order to... Okay, let's go here. I'm not going to play um, Knight takes F4 yet. I have a trick. Oh, that's true, Dark Tiger. I see your line there that I could have played with Knight E8, but nah, I don't like that. <laughs> you might be right, though. Temporarily. Bartholomew has better tactics than I originally thought. Oh, well, thank you. I thought he was more of a positional player. Yeah, I do like my positional play. Not going to lie. That's my preferred style in chess. But I can, I can hang tactically if needed. Absolutely. Okay, this is looking really, really good. I just need to not flag. Let's take here. And let's invade now. Further pressure. It's becoming a bullet game now. But we got all the pieces involved in the attack. All of them. Knight h5. This is looking like big time trouble. Forcing the queen off, and then I hit him with the jackhammer. Rook takes e5. Are we going to get another double check discovery mate? Not quite. But this is a uh, checkmate here. All right. Thank you, Ha, for the game. <laughs> Let's hit him with the I've got to go. Just because he hit me with the uh, I let you off. GG. Um, let's see what uh, the evaluation is on Bishop F4. Wow, the engine hates Bishop F4. Yeah, I had a feeling it was a little unsound. But I think it's, it's because of take. And then we'll just fire up the engine here. And if king takes, he takes d4. And I'm a little bit loose with these pieces. This undefends the knight. Engine just says I'm getting uh, destroyed here. 
which is interesting. I mean, I believe it. But the Avengers, the the Avengers. <laughs> I tried to say engines and evaluations, and it came out Avengers, like the Avengers. Maybe we can make that a a um just a shortcut way to talk about that. The engine evaluations. The Avengers are becoming increasingly aggressive with their evaluations as these engines improve. So, like this doesn't look like it should be at nearly minus four or minus three and a half position, but I do believe the evaluation there. So maybe I need to rethink how I'm handling this. Maybe bishop f4. Yeah, bishop f4 before committing to e4, that would be a better, more coherent way to play the position. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the game. Tough one. Whitmire, you're up next. 1900, 1958, another 1900. Oh, I should probably make a move. <laughs> it's my move. The vengeance, yeah. John, how long did it take you to pass 1600? Honestly, I think 1600 might have been one of the rating levels that I like more or less skipped. Because bear in mind, I was. When I like made my most strides in chess, I was really young. You know, I was 13, 14, 15 years old. Um, so I might have been rated in the 1600s, but I, I know I skipped like one rating level entirely, like 15 or 1600. I had a couple tournaments that just rocketed me up there. But that is obviously atypical. You really only see it with kids and like vastly underrated adults who, I don't know, maybe play online a lot. Okay, interesting opening by Black here. Let's keep our wits about us. I'm up, I'm up a pawn, but you never know what can happen in situations like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Black take on C2 or G2 in the interest of trying to play for the initiative, trying to cause trouble. Oh, you also skipped 1600? Nice. It's like skipping your grade in school. You just jump right over it. <laughs> Do you think it's ever too late to get better at chess? Not to be professional level, though. I am 34. Definitely not too late, no. I mean, if you want to become a title player, then yeah, that might be out of reach. But as you said, uh, not professional level, you got plenty of plenty of runway. Maybe here now, or, hmm, could take the knight first. King f1 is another option. Castle's queenside. Castle's queenside, probably the most obvious move. I think I'm going to go for that. It still hangs g2, but I'm trying to land knight g5, like, semi-cleanly here. So let's go for it. What is the rating level you think everyone can get? Well, assuming you're, like, reasonably young, you're not, like, a senior citizen when you're learning chess, I honestly think most people can get to um, 1,800 online, like at a minimum. Probably more like 2,000. But there's always going to be some extenuating circumstances. Maybe I should take it this way. This might be better. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm up in exchange. Black sacked the exchange, I think, because I was going to take on f7. Otherwise, like, queen d6, knight takes f7. Was not looking too appetizing. All right. Um, let's go here. Position's still a little volatile. So I'm just trying to calm things down a bit. Convert. Let's take. Bishop's under attack. Um, maybe bishop d3, although there is rook takes d4. I guess I'll take. Again, I'm kind of being a little cautious here. Oh, he takes with the pawn. I, I was looking at queen takes. That seemed a lot more uh, annoying to me. But queen takes, okay. Um, let's go here now. Guard this. 
Watch my time a little bit. Trying to take here, but you know, I got to dodge some stuff in the short term. Do you think every healthy child can become a GM when taught right starting at the age of two or three? Wow, two or three is aggressive. Um, I would imagine so, yes. To answer your question. I mean, I honestly don't think GM is uh, like something that demands someone to be inherently intelligent. I think someone who is average intelligence and just works hard can become GM for sure. I think it just depends like when you learn chess and how committed you are to improvement. Okay, let's try to win this end game, John. We got to do it. I really need to focus here because of the time. This is a good move. This helps. This definitely helps. Oh, B4. I'm constructing a mating net. Look at this, guys. I've got a mating net coming up. Black had to play that move to try to survive, but it's not going to be enough. Run the pawn. Run it. Check. Let's go take the bishop. Promote. Come back here. Don't Rosen trap me, please. Check. Maybe I should have left the pawn so I don't get Rosen trapped. Check. Check. Oh, that was close. 0.7. Once again, I pushed right up to the limit of what. I'm capable of uh, demonstrating in Lee Chess plays with my skills. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the game. Yeah, despite your very odd opening, what is this called? Is this? It's like a reverse grab. The Borg. The Borg defense. That's right. I wasn't sure if Borg was uh, this one, which actually just loses. Oh, Borg Gambit. <laughs> That's Borg Gambit. Whereas this is the, the classical Borg. The more, the more refined Borg where you don't give up upon. <laughs> Borg is grab backwards. Also might have something to do with Star Trek. I don't know. Yeah. I, I love the people who are like carrying on our conversation in the spectator room on Lee Chess. <laughs> like, like I'm looking at chat. These people are next level. Like they're typing in the, the spectator room. Yeah, I don't know. I maybe um hey, look at that. Black's gambit. The engine is not buying my position. It says that black is better here. Had you gone queen d6, Whitmer. Queen d6. Yeah, queen d5, I can see why that's kind of a weaker move because you do lose some tempi with the queen. I don't know. I don't think I converted this all that well though. Bishop takes c6. Okay, bishop c4 is evidently a lot better here. I was definitely a little worried about queen takes c6 hitting this pawn. Had you done that, especially with the time situation, I don't know. You might have been able to get back in this game. But fortunately, I was able to uh, simplify. Yeah, again, maybe bishop h6. I was going to go f4 there to block the attack, but this too would have been much tougher to break down. You have chances for sure, but not as played. I think too many pieces got traded here. Thanks for the game. Courageous effort with the Borg. Oh, Harlequin gets another game. You guys can see, I just clicked the accept random challenge button. I have no control. The algo. How did I get challenged by a bot, by the way? Eggnog chess engine? I'm getting challenged by a bot <laughs> in Lee Chess plays. Okay, we're going we're gonna to abort this game because Harlequin's not here and they did already play one game. But yes, you can challenge again if you want. I've seen Stockfish give plus five in drawing positions, especially in the end game. Yeah, the um, Stockfish evaluation may not be accurate. You're better off using the table base by far if it's available. 
which you can actually use on Leech just by clicking the little database button. You can do that. Am I still buds with Danny? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, we have not had a falling out or anything. <laughs> yeah, Danny's a cool guy. Okay, I had this in a game recently that I did not really impress with, so let's go here. Yeah, I played this in um, a titled Tuesday game recently that's on my channel. And I won a pawn, but I had to give up a lot of dark score control to achieve it. Let's try to not do that again. Let's go here. Keep the bishop. I'm ready to play h3 next. Okay, black seems to know what they're doing here. This looks pretty normal for both sides. I'm going to replace the bishop to a better square. Guard c5. Okay, now I'm looking at the... Uh, hmm, if I go there, I lose that, though. Okay, let's go here. Why did I not play the I Am Not a GM tournament for the past couple years? I didn't get invited to the most recent version. They invited me to the second one, but it didn't work for my schedule. But I think now they might have a policy where they don't invite the past champions. Hello, Yuho. Good to see you in the chat. Yuho is a longtime viewer of my channel, so good to see you in Lee Chess Plays. Cheers, Yuho. Ooh, how about this? This move looks spicy. I kind of like the look of it. Looks very interesting. I'm probably not going to play it, though. I don't think it's the best move. Let's go c5. I fully expect black to go for uh, f5 type thing. But let's do this. Let's, let's gain this anchor square for my rook. And we'll go from there. Yeah, now I'm going to pivot. We're going to pivot the knight. If you can get a knight to d6 in this structure, it's usually very, very good. So... Let's try for that. I'm okay with some trades. Probably here. Am I overextended somehow? I'm not seeing it, so let's do it. I also don't mind if F4 is played because now this is freed up. Should I go knight d6 first? Nah, I think I should go here first. Yes, Eric won the last title, tu or not title Tuesday. I am not a GM. Okay, this move I saw, I was wondering if I could go there, but he probably takes, takes, and then takes here. So I probably do have to take this way. This is interesting. Definitely an interesting little setup. Could be dangerous for me. I, I should be careful here for sure. Knight d6, queen e6, bishop c4, queen e7. Mm. I don't know. I think I'm going to try to get my king over, or my rook over, rather. Let's go here and rook to h1. Oh, but now, I, again, I have to worry about this. Okay, so now let's go here. Just trying to be careful, folks. Queen here, and then I think I'm going to go rook over. Not going to lie, though. It looks a little exposed for my king, but I think I can manage. I think I can get the king to safety. What about your king? Well, that, that's exactly what I'm thinking. What about my king? <laughs> it looks like I should lose with this move, but queen h4, king g2, and then what? Because I control all these squares. So I, I actually don't think black has much. For the time being. Mm -hmm. I guess black's going to try knight h5. Du, 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 du. Okay. Um, let's go here. Take when this lands in here. Otherwise, I'm just trying to get my pieces over. Just trying to get them situated on the king side. Maybe I slip away this way. Black's playing well. I mean, I give black credit. They're they're playing a good game here. Everything is still up in the air. This pawn has been hanging for a while, but I don't feel like I ever have the momentum to go take it. Let's say. Uh, let's take that. 
And I'm going to go here. Okay. Um, let's go here. Here. Take. I'm definitely worse here somewhat, but it's going to be a time scramble. I'm I'm actually kind of solid for the moment. But definitely I'm feeling I'm feeling worse in this position. Just no checkmate. No mates. I'm going to survive. We did it. Brilliant map was outplaying me the whole game, but I survived. Yeah, good game. Good game. You had me under pressure. I think your F4, F3 idea was pretty good. Right here. <clears throat> Let's see. Computer says that I should play F3, probably to stop Black's idea. So Knight C4 might have been mistimed. Do that first. That's like a typical King's Indian idea too, so you can... Retreat the bishop here and just force black to take longer to get their uh, attack going. And then try to jump the knight up like this. So as played, I don't see like a tactical reason yet why this is losing, but it does feel uncomfortable. Definitely my king is somewhat opened. And again, I think Brilliant Map was on their way towards a victory, but the time got the better of them. This is minus three, minus four. I do definitely believe black should win this because I'm so weak on the dark squares now. My pawns are bad. But time. Time is the great equalizing factor. So thanks for the game. Really nice one. Definitely the toughest game I played on Lee Chess Plays today. So thanks again, Brilliant Map. Polybi, you're up next. These are hard-earned rating points for me. Yeah, eggnog. Uh, eggnog is still in there. I'm really curious about this bot now because... I don't know. I'm just curious like why it's at that rating level. We're going to abort this game. Looks like Libya is not there. Okay, President. We're getting a lot of 1900s. Is everyone like a strong 1900 on Lee Chess? You guys are adhering to that rule. Let's play a Black Mar Demar Gambit. Better to be a strong 1900 than a weak 2000. Play the bot? I, I really want to. I might, I might do it off stream. <laughs> Let's go here. Now, this gambit is not the best. There's definitely ways um, that black can pretty effectively deal with this. But it is interesting. It is quite interesting. Let's do this one. Attack this, attack this. Uh, take here is not a concern because we take here. <laughs> Great question, Dr. Spod. Excellent question. This is a good move, by the way. How am I supposed to play this? I think I take with a pawn. Yeah, and black can play e6 and just let let me take b7. The only thing I know about this position is I don't think you're supposed to take b7 here. So I guess I'm going to play it like an actual gambit and just be down a pawn. Record yourself against the bot would make a fun YouTube short. Oh, uh, speaking of bots, I do recommend if you guys are maybe hesitant to play against human opposition, check out the Maya bots on Lee Chess. So Maya bot one, for instance, or I think it's just Maya one. I'll type it in the Twitch chat and also on YouTube. If you go to those bots, like if you go to that profile, um, those are human-like AIs. Ooh, this is gonna be trouble for black. That are more fun to play against than just like pure stockfish, for instance. Because they've learned from human games, as far as I understand. And I think there's three bots. There's like Maya 1, Maya 5, and like Maya 7 or 9 or something. 
I don't know why it's those numbers specifically, but there's three different bots that are, they're each a little bit different rated. Hey, Yuho, thank you for gifting a sub. Wow, you gifted a sub to me. Thank you so much. Thanks again, Yuho. Yeah, Black saw that they couldn't recapture, so now I'm just getting a full piece for my trouble. Oh, there you go. Yeah, DK put the, the link in the chat, the Maya bot. Why is that? Why is there a one, a five, and a nine? Like, what happened to two, three, four, et cetera? All the in-between numbers. <laughs> Let's go here. John, if I ate 17 apples a day, what's the highest title I could attain? You would, you'd probably regress. You'd probably lose a few hundred rating points. <laughs> yeah, if you're on the Steve Jobs diet, I can't recommend it for chess improvement. Okay, let's take. And now we're going here. Attack the F6 bishop. The Steve Jobs died. It, it worked two ways, right? Because, you know, Steve Jobs and Apple. And also, I'm pretty sure he was, like, known for just eating one food for long periods of time. I think that was the thing about him. He would occasionally do diets like that. Okay, so we're just putting the finishing touches on this. If I play this move, what do you guys think are the chances? Black goes rook d8, I take, and we finish with an epaulette mate. That would be cool. That would be really cool. So I could again still think about it, but Black's going to eventually block with the queen on e7. I think that's the point of that move. Also, um, yeah, the other point probably is that they're defending f8. I feel like I should have some sort of knockout move here, but I'm not seeing it. I mean, bishop c4, bishop f5, bishop takes h7. All these are decent. I want more, though. I want more. d5. Maybe pawn d5. Let's do that. Looks like fun. I'm trying to get this in, if possible. Okay, here. Bishop f5 now. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no, my g2 pawn. Take. Nah. Let's play, I don't know, rook f2. Rook F2. I can't resist. Check. Okay, we kind of got the checkmate I was referring to. Not an epaulette mate, though. Because there's no other rook here to complete the epaulette. Which has something to do with, like, the shoulder pads on uh, military costumes. That's what the epaulette refers to. Okay, thank you for the game, President. Yeah, so this was looking fine until you underestimated the pressure down here. You played this move pretty fast, as I recall, knight d7, but I do have a big-time big, big time threat there. Yeah. King has one wide shoulder, that's right, with the rook on g8. Otherwise, this line is good. This variation, I think Sam Shanklin recommends this for black. I played this a time or two as well, so not bad at all. All right, thank you for the game. We probably have time for like two or three more games. Quicksilver, you're up next. Quicksilver. Isn't that like a clothing brand? I feel like Quicksilver is one of those brands like everyone wore when um, we are in like junior high. Like the Aero Pastel generation, Abercrombie. <laughs> I feel like all that stuff just merges in my head. Like the preppy type brands. 
Hollister Jenner. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The California cheek. Maybe this is more of like a US based thing, but I'm sure many of many of you out there have worn that as well, if, even if you're outside the States. Haven't seen a lot of those brands in years. JB dating himself. I know. Yeah, I really dating myself to the like late 1990s. Let's go here. These situations are always nice when you get a big clamp with the pawns. This bishop on f4 is a monster in these positions. Um, bishop a6 maybe. Yeah, let's go bishop a6. Looks like the most direct. And in the future, I may double up. Ooh, or I may just take this. Is there any problem with that? Knight b8? Nah, let's take. That's a really nice pawn. You know, the problem for black two in these positions, it's not even just that you lose a pawn. It's that uh, the rest of your position remains bad, even after you, you like win a pawn, or you lose the pawn, I should say. So that's the real big issue with these positions, in my estimation. What should I do here? Um... I don't know. Let's just take this one. We'll give black this pawn. I'm just going to castle now. I'm going to castle because if I keep my king in the center, maybe there's some sort of like pin that black can set up on the second rank or like a knight e4 type move. So we'll just play it like this. Mm-hmm. Take. Probably take the file now. Oh, yeah. Quicksilver probably has some nice... Uh, Products, some surfwear. I think I was watching some documentary on Abercrombie and like the downfall of Abercrombie, but that was definitely like a um, fashion phenomenon of the time. And now Abercrombie is like non existent. Pretty sure they went out of business. Okay, I'm going to win more material here. Rook e8, take, take, c6. Use the pin. What was the mountaineering documentary you once recommended on your stream? Oh, that was uh, The Alpinist about, about uh, Marc-Andre Leclerc. Amazing documentary. Really, really interesting. Absolutely gorgeous scenes in that one, too. I highly recommend that. Well worth your guys' uh, time to watch that. The Alpinist. Okay. Thank you, Quicksilver, for the game. Yeah, that's just a tough structure when you get into this. Yep, in my opinion, you got to challenge these structures early if you want to try to fight back against them. And it is kind of the issue with this queen capture. I think most... Strong players like playing this way. I know um, I know Eric plays these types of positions too, Eric Rosen. So if you watch his stream, he plays the London a lot, so you get this out of the London too. Um, pretty strong for white. Like I'm talking already around here, I think the engine's going to be showing a pretty healthy advantage for white. Yeah. Already. Yeah, right, Maris? Yep. Okay, thanks for the game. Let's try to get two more games in. We'll do this one, and then we'll do the blindfold game, as usual, guys. The Alapinist is a documentary about some Sicilian player, Geary. <laughs> nice, Yuho. Maybe my opponent will play the Alapin. Nope, no Alapin. <laughs> the Alapinist, yeah. It could be about Yevgeny Sveshnikov, the primary practitioner that comes to mind in the C3 Sicilian, the Alapin. Blindfold against the bot? Dude, that would be interesting. Should I do that? I would feel bad about cutting the line, though. Like giving the bot the, v the VIP treatment. Blindfold against eggnog? I'm tempted. Are they still challenging me? Yup. Oh, they're moving up the list, too. Again, this doesn't really matter because it's except random, but they're still there. Eggnog is waiting. It's got such an intriguing name, too. Does anyone actually like eggnog, by the way?
There's got to be someone out there who like drinks it even when it's not around the holidays. Exactly, Bridgen. Might be okay for one month of the year. Let's go here. Use the pin. The pure essence of Christmas. <laughs> It's kind of like people who, who, who listen to Christmas music in the summertime or in, in other months that are not December. It would just be weird. It would be strange. But there are people out there like that. Okay, I'm really liking my position here. Rook d2, bishop here, knight d3. All these moves come to mind. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I should improve my knight, but I'm not sure. I'm torn. Mm, I don't want to trade too many pieces is the thing. I want to keep some pieces on board here. So I'm trying to think how best to do that while increasing the pressure. I think I should go for this. I think we'll start with this one. And then maybe try to work the bishop in here, but I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that yet. Let's play h5 first. Just be flexible. This, this structure could be a little annoying to get through, and my bishop is screened out for the time being, but nevertheless, I think this is still pretty good. Bishop d2... Okay, we'll go here. Rookie two, I'm not winning material with this. So let's just back it up here. Yeah, if white kind of sits tight, it's a little bit annoying, but I feel like we're making some progress. Let's take. Okay, now I can maybe work in here. Let's do that. White's going to play bishop a1, I would assume. Maybe bishop a3. Okay, but now I can think about this move if I want. Should I do it? Let's do it. Let's play it. So if take, I take here. I didn't really calculate this if uh, I can catch the pawns, but I kind of just assumed I can. That's uh, I am level calculation there. <laughs> Just assume that things will work out optimistically. Okay, I think I think this is a mistake. I think bishop c2 is a mistake. Because now on take, I can take. And if white takes here, we fork the two bishops. Horsey army, that's right. Yeah, shout out to the horsey set. Now if the knight moves, I have knight ta uh, rook takes c2. Should I play that? Should I pre-move that? Like total boss pre-move? Just no hands. Put them up so you guys know I'm serious. White could play knight d5. That's a slight risk that I run, but I don't think white's going to do that. But if white moves that knight, we're getting in rook takes c2. White's got to make a decision here. Okay, it didn't happen, but we get the fork here anyways. Who needs this light square bishop? Who needs it? <laughs> I will need it to win, probably. Let's take. We're going to march up now. I might march all the way in. Okay. Thank you for the game. A check. Yes, GG. Um, I probably completely mispronounced that. But I don't know how to pronounce. I think that's French for chess. I should, I should learn how to pronounce that. Yeah, so interesting little situation here. I think white's probably fine, but it seems a little unpleasant. But I'm not sure how best to increase the pressure. But I think you should sit tight. I think like right around here, 
You should honestly probably just go back with your rook and wait. Eshek and Mat. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I think you should go back and wait and try to keep the tension down the file because as played, I think B5 is quite strong. Engine seems to agree. Okay, thank you very much for the game. All right, here we go. Last game of the session, guys. Let's go into my preferences. Let's go all the way down. Blindfold chess. Yes. It's going to be our blindfold game. Oh, I really want to play eggnog, but we're not going to cut the line. We're going to keep it uh, 100 here. Oh, Polybi again. Polybi, we didn't get a game earlier, so let's see if Polybi actually plays this time. Thanks, everyone, for watching Lee Chess Plays. Let's play Scandi. We're going to stick with what we know. So if you guys want to see the pieces, go follow me on Lee Chess. My username is Fins, F-I-N-S. Or you can just keep it keep it dialed in here. You can suffer along with me, not having sight of the pieces. This is a tradition. The final game of Lee Chess Plays, we always do blindfold. Always. And I've got my queen out on A5. I'm trying to be active. Very important to um, stay reasonably okay on the clock in these games. I am playing Daredevil with the bishop on D2. A4? What is it? A4? Okay, I'm happy to go here, so let's do that. I think a4 is already pretty much a mistake. Um, but let's not lose our wits here. a6 maybe now. Um, what is my opponent really threatening? Like, take there? I don't know. I could castle. Yeah, let's just castle. Oh, but is c3 a problem? Okay, let, let's take. Let's take the bishop check. And then queen takes. Get the queens off the board. Takes with the king. Okay, let's go check. I'm falling behind on the clock, so that's a direct violation of what I said I didn't want to do. Let's develop here. Got to guard c7. Mm-hmm. Oh, I missed that. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be kind of annoying. Now I got to go here, probably. Might get a trade. Okay, then I can work with this structure. It's probably okay. Take here if, if white takes. Ooh, takes there. Interesting. Okay, this, this is a weird structure. I feel like this should be a pretty good structure for me, actually. Even though I have double isolated pawns. Let's go king d7. Now, most importantly, the position's pretty stable, and I can see it in my head pretty well. Um, let's go here. That's the type of thing I say like right before I lose, by the way. So do not read too far into that. <laughs> let's go h6. I want to keep my bishop. It's coming back. Okay, let's go here. Yep, fine. Go here. I have a strategic edge here, for sure. The degree of that edge is debatable, but I think we're looking pretty good. Maybe knight d3 is coming, I don't know. <clears throat> Put a5 now. Let's do that. Try to attack this pawn. And now I insist we'll go here. Because I control b1, so this seems really nice for me. Takes. Can I check? I think I can check here. Looks like trouble for that white king. There. Okay, now I take c3, right? Take that. Okay. I think I'm going to come back now. 
And we're gonna go after the pawn. Yeah, let's take this. Knight g2. Wait, doesn't that blunder the knight? Oh no, this works here. Okay. All right, so let's go here now. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to be tough with the time. Here? I'm trying to go after this. This position's winning. But the time is a big factor. Uh, e5 now, right? E5 and I'm going to win the knight. Take. Nice. Okay, let's come back. Um, let's go here. I know a d5 is hanging, but I'm not going to take it yet. I'm going to take this one. And then come over here. I don't know where that a pawn is. Let's give a ch oh, Where's my bishop? Bishop's here. Check. Hold up. Let's go here. And I think I'm mating, guys. I think I'm pretty much mating now. It comes back. Okay, fine. Let's go here. Um, let's give it a check. Let's bring this back. I'm up a bishop still. There we go. Whew. Okay, White could have taken my rook at the end, but I was just trying not to flag. <laughs> I wasn't sure how many A-pawns were left on the board. I couldn't remember if White had one or two still, but I think I took one earlier. That's why I wasn't sure about moving to this file, because the, the A-pawn situation was the one thing I wasn't, I wasn't visualizing so well. But otherwise, I think that was pretty good. That was interesting. I don't like this decision by White. I think taking A6 was not the best. I think definitely White should take F5. Turn off blindfold mode before you forget. Yes, thank you, Twitch Watcher. I, I have a tendency of leaving that on. Okay, the, the computer says this is equal, but seems like I gradually outplayed White. Once I got these pawn breaks in with the rook coming in, this felt really, really good. And eventually I won a piece. Looks like I could have played E5 even earlier. But still worked out pretty well. Whew, okay. Fun one. Fun one, fun one. I'm glad I didn't play Eggnog, though. That might not have gone very well. But this player, Polibi, was almost as strong as Eggnog. So thanks for the game, Polibi. All right. Yes, and I will turn off my, <laughs> my blindfold mode. There we go. Now we're back to normal. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching Lee Chess Plays. We're back. Took a one-week break, but we're back now. Um, thanks again to Lee Chess for putting this on. Make sure you use all the tools on Lee Chess. Appreciate everyone challenging today. If you didn't get a game, I apologize. Check out Sabina's streams as well. She's been doing Lee Chess Plays in addition, usually sometime during the week. And I will see you guys next Sunday. Thank you, uh, Lopare. Thank you, No Joke Chess, our mods. Thanks to everyone watching on Twitch and YouTube. Have a great week. And we're going to raid someone here. All right. Bye, everyone.